Migration is a harsh reality in Honduras. We, bishops, recently issued a message, and one of the things we said was this. The thing that Honduras exports the most is migrants. I've seen many cases on the news. I watch the news and hear that most say they are leaving because there is no work here, that there is too much poverty. And everyone says, I do this to help my family. I am leaving here to help my family. Honduras has always been a migrant country, since the time of our grandparents, of our parents, people have had to leave the country. Thus, there is already a pattern. You have to emigrate to have more opportunities, to have a better quality of life. Actually, I'm going to tell you that we will not get rich. Rich people are already rich. It's just to find a way to live a little better. I'm the only male in the house, and my family has been very poor. Do you understand me? And we have suffered a lot wanting to look for a better future. My daughter's name was Eva Noemi Hernandez Serrato, and she was a go-getter. Well, it can be said that she always wanted to sell something, sell clothes, sell food. But one day she said, Oh, Mom, I want to go there, to the United States, to help you. And so she left on February 4th, and she left only to find death. She died in a massacre. I've seen many cases of mothers who say, my son left, and the train maimed him, or killed him, or I don't know anything about him. I have seen 14, 16-year-old boys who, by getting into a moving wagon, the train cut off both their feet, both feet, and in a second they were already marked for life. There are also women who are dragged by the train. And well, from there it starts. Crossing Mexico is a big story. So many things happen. At present in our country, the government does not care about this reality, which the really poor people go through. Violence is unpredictable. Honduras has become a transit point for drug trafficking, and this has led to the loss of many lives, especially those of young people who end up emigrating. Entire families have emigrated from Honduras. We have seen all these caravans moving to the United States or Spain. What is going on with the caravans? People join up, and on some nights, you can maybe see 500, 800 people leaving. This, in fact, happens every day. If you go to the border, to the blind spots migrants use to avoid customs, then you can see that they are leaving every day. Most of all, the caravans were a way to feature the country's political situation and highlight, or maybe show, that there are no opportunities, mostly for young people. The causes have been well analyzed. They are basically two, extreme poverty and violence. We live in a context of violent rackets. When someone, a youth, is told, either you join us or else, or if a family is told, either you pay up or there will be consequences. People will either pay or the youth will get into trouble or be forced to flee the country. 
Most people are unemployed, so they have to find ways to get by, because it is very difficult in their country. There might be some opportunities, but they are not enough. The church as such does not have the means for large projects, to provide people with resources and not emigrate. We are more inclined towards calling on the government and the private sector to provide jobs so that Hondurans don't have to emigrate. Development in Honduras depends on policies aimed at the poor, as well as on private capital and companies that invest in job creation, because unemployment is a serious problem. When we ask what worries Hondurans the most, it is precisely unemployment and the great gap between the cost of basic food and money. This is why they come to the church, because they know that in the church they can find various forms of social pastoral care. This is why they come to her, because they feel welcomed, encouraged, as well as guided in the decisions that they have to make, like whether to emigrate or not. If they do emigrate, let it be in safety, knowing how to go, what rights they have, what papers they need to bring. At the same time, we tell them, look, think it over, you can find another job here. We try to partner with other organizations involved in migration, with job banks, training, so that people can enroll in these programs and not have to leave. In Honduras, poverty is not the only issue. Although the country is poor, it could avoid high levels of inequality. In Honduras, we talk about social inequity. Social inequity means that a very small group de facto owns the means of production, owns businesses, and also has political power while the vast majority has access only to limited resources for a life worthy of its name. In this area, there are two slums, bordos as they are called, on the river bank. It's municipal land taken over by people coming mainly from rural areas. This is where things are the most lacking, especially in terms of housing. Lives here fall apart due to alcohol, drugs among youth, broken families, violence. Well, I have had to bury quite a few kids. The people living in the Bordos have very limited resources. They cannot afford the luxury of a private hospital for lack of money. They go to public hospitals, which have no medicines. This is an initiative of the Good Shepherd Parish, and at $2, Consultations are quite affordable here. All medical needs are covered. For some seniors, as far as possible, we also provide some clothing. 
In other words, we cover health, nutrition, and clothing.